Welcome, riders, ridettes, and pillions. I'm Elliot, and this is Coda, and you're watching the Van Blam YouTube channel. While we're out here in northern Arizona enjoying the beautiful roads near Flagstaff, I thought it was finally time to talk about riding two up on the Triumph Speed Twin. I now have a decent amount of experience carrying a pillion on this bike, both with the stock suspension and with the adjustable tech bike parts front and rear setup that I have on it now. I never really filmed much of us riding together with stock suspension, but we did go for some rides around DC and in New York. So today I'll talk about what that was like, how it's changed after I updated the suspension, and get some of Coda's opinions on it as well. Everybody knows that the stock suspension on the Speed Twin is the biggest corner they cut to hit the price point they did. I personally always found it was fine, but it seems like riders who are heavier than me and ride more aggressively than I do find it to be pretty inadequate. The springs really started to feel cheap to me though when I started carrying a pillion on a regular basis. I found that the bike would sag drastically as soon as she got on and the handling was really negatively affected. In the corners, it was just really wallowy. It didn't want to track on a consistent curve. It wasn't very confidence inspiring at all. It is perfectly doable and we went on some nice rides and had a good time and were perfectly safe. Just don't expect to do any sporty riding. Now the stock shocks, uh, basic as they are, are technically adjustable for preload, although I was never able to actually do that. Triumph supplies this hilarious little tool that you're supposed to put into a tiny little hole and try to turn this adjustment ring around and it just doesn't work. You can't get the leverage you need. I'm pretty sure you would actually have to remove the muffler every single time you wanted to adjust your preload just so you could get enough leverage on that ring. So as far as I'm concerned, no. The stock shocks are not adjustable for preload and I never adjusted them. Eventually I did decide to upgrade the suspension on this bike, both for the benefit of two up riding and also just to see if I could extract a little bit more confidence and performance in the twisty mountain roads. Now I'm not a rider who would benefit from like a nitron setup or something fancy like that, so that's why I went with tech bike parts. You pay just a little bit of money and get just a little bit of performance in exchange. I actually have a video about installing and assessing this suspension that you should check out if you haven't already. Now before I get into what kind of difference it made riding with a passenger, I want to note that I have not really adjusted this suspension at all, even though it is fully adjustable. I pretty much just put everything on their minimum softest setting and then backed them away from that by what I would guess is about 10%. So yes, I am still riding two up with the same rear preload and damping settings that I am when I ride solo. And while you may think that that will lead me to make kind of an unfair assessment of this setup for two up riding, I think it's actually a completely fair assessment because that's the exact same thing I was doing when I had the stock springs on here. So I can already tell you that the tech bike part suspension has made a big difference. When Coda gets on the back seat now, the bike hardly sags at all. And when I go around a bend, even a gentle one like the ones out here, the bike is just much more willing to follow a consistent line. So now we're up here in a segment of Arizona Route 89A that I have dubbed the Monkey's Fist, which you may recall from the last video I shot here. And I find that as I set into these curves, yeah, it feels like it should. Now, you know I'm not an aggressive rider in general, and especially not when I have a passenger on board. But for what I'm trying to do here, this feels very natural. I would almost say it feels comparable to when I'm riding solo, just maybe a bit more top heavy. If I were going to run into limitations of this suspension when riding two up on a twisty mountain road like this, I would have to be going a lot faster than I'm actually comfortable going. All right, you first. All right, now, just so everyone knows, have you ever ridden on any motorcycle before this one? No, this is the first one. No, so you don't have anything to compare it to then? Are you comfortable on it? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, did you notice a difference before and after I upgraded the suspension? No, not the same. Really? Okay. That's interesting. If anything, I would think it would be worse. Because, um, like, comfort was not the goal. I would think that with it being a little bit sportier, 
you'd feel more of the bumps. Um, but that might just go to me. I'm doing okay back there. That's good. And that was our first time on kind of a twisty road like that, wasn't it? Yeah. What'd you think? I loved it. Yeah? <laughs> you want to do more like that? <laughs> All right, we will. You heard it here, folks. If you know somebody with a Triumph Speed Twin and they're asking you to go for a ride with them, do it. Hey, in a <laughs> How's it going? I got an old 650 Oh, cool. It's a 2019. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I hope I'll have this for 38 years. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and he came, he was here in the Porsche. Oh, shit. Is that a 996 Turbo? Oh, damn. Yes, it is. That guy's got taste. <laughs> So you'll notice that I've pretty much only talked about the suspension and handling when it comes to carrying a passenger on the Speed Twin. I haven't said anything about how the engine copes with the added weight. And that's because there isn't anything to say. This bike just has so much torque on tap that you don't really notice when you go to twist the throttle that there's a passenger on the back. So after we filmed the rest of this video, I received a question from a viewer, and I've gotten this at least once before, about how the Speed Twin fares for touring with a passenger. The issue, at least in my case here with these saddlebags, the SW Motec Blaze saddlebags, is that once they're fitted in place and I, the rider, am seated in the saddle, that leaves almost no room uh, behind my feet and in front of the saddlebags for Coda's feet to go. She pretty much has to ride exclusively on her heels or the arches of her feet. She doesn't really have a lot of options to move around. We're about halfway through a ride. Um, we've been out for about an hour so far. How was it for you? It was better than I thought it was going to be. I thought the biggest problem would be that there wasn't room for me to sit with the saddlebags on, and I was a little scared about getting on. That was easy. I Look at that dog. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Hi! Um, I think if we went longer, it would be more uncomfortable for you because I'd keep sliding into your back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did notice you sliding forward a bit more. Um, Part of me thinks it's like the, the Velcro strap that goes across here is like not as grippy as the original seat. Uh, so you combine that with the fact that the Speed Twin seat has just an ever so slight forward lean. I can see how that was kicking you forward a lot when we went on the brakes. So maybe if you're using a different set of saddlebags than these that don't have that strap across the middle, you might not encounter that issue as much. So the only other thing I would want to go on a long trip I don't, I don't know, know how two people, people to get their luggage in there. <laughs> Good point. You don't think you can pack for a, a long weekend in 21 liters? You see how I pack. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just not the way they... When we're riding, I don't notice them. It's just my feet placement. If I try and move my feet back, then I remember, oh. So what about last Sunday when we went to Boulder? and went up all up through the mountains um would you have wanted those bags in place on that ride that we probably we did 100 miles that day yeah it wouldn't be the end of the world so what i'm kind of getting here is as long as you can pack really light then it's feasible mm -hmm. you could do like a weekend getaway out of town you know yeah maybe not any like interstate odysseys no. uh, of a week or more at a time but you could do a weekend. So I guess that's all I have to say about this topic for now. If you have any questions for me or for Coda, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And if you have any personal experience carrying a passenger on the Speed Twin, I'd love to hear about it, especially if you're able to compare and contrast it with other motorcycles. And lastly, if you want to see more videos like this about this motorcycle and its adventures out here in the West, then make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. As always, you folks ride safe, and we'll see you back here for the next video. Thanks for watching.